On Tuesday, September 12th, Unity introduced a new runtime fee in a change on their pricing model, which caused uproar across their developer community, hurting their core user base. And in this video, I sit down with Vitaly, both of us shareholders of Unity, to talk about this change, what we can expect going forward from the developer community, and also from Unity as a company. And just as a spoiler alert, some of us did sell our shares in Unity stock. On Tuesday last week, Unity introduced this runtime fee, and that's linked to the number of installations that a game receives. This is a metric that previously did not incur any charges for developers, but under the new policy, developers in Unity's free tier would be charged 20 cents per installation once their game surpasses 200,000 downloads and generates $200,000 in revenue. That fee is gonna go into effect in January 1st, 2024, so just in a couple of months. They've received immense backlash from the game development community. The thing that wasn't clear, which they're clarifying, but this is retroactive. So if you ended up making, right now you're at 196,000 uh, downloads and $198,000, and then you January 1st, you're over 200,000. I think supposedly you're paying for that previous install that's happening, which is kind of crazy that you're retroactively going to charge people. It's like you're going to Walmart, you go there every week, and then Walmart says, well, you owe us 50 cents every time you actually went in for the last three years. Right. And you're like, where did that come from? These are the Unity price plans. This is important to show and what Unity is trying to do. They were tired of not making money off developers making under a million bucks. This is what they're doing for the smaller developers. Revenue threshold is 200,000. Install threshold lifetime, which is ridiculous, but that's going backwards in time now. 200,000. Here we are at 20 cents per install. I I want to point out why this is bad. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, 20 cents, that doesn't mean anything. So when you make an app, it doesn't mean your app is successful. And if you have some sort of a model to advertise or even upsell in the app because it's a free app, you might not make actually 20 cents per install. That's kind of crazy to think right? that you actually might be making less than this. So anyone in this tier might, even if it's half the money or breaking even, like what's the point of developing if you're not making anything? But Unity is actually trying to do this. They're trying to push you to the higher tier where you have to pay around two grand as opposed to this free model. They want to push you to the Unity Pro model where I think they're charging you 2000 and change right now, which is actually not a lot if you're making a million bucks. But they were tired of not getting all the money from the guys making under a million dollars. So they're pushing you to this where it becomes a lot more reasonable as soon as, look at this. This is a 10X, okay? <laughs> if you have a new installs per month, a million, you are actually doing better in Unity, not paying as much, and you're making more money. On top of it, they're contacting developers. I don't know if you heard this part. And they're telling them basically, hey, you don't have to pay this at all because we're going to exempt you because you're part of our, you're using our ad platform uh, from Iron Source. That's because they're integrating that in. And you're not using App Lovin'. They're like, come and be part of the Unity family and don't worry about this at all. They're pushing you towards the pro level because right. they want to start making money off of everybody, even the free people who are making very little. And they want you to use the Iron Source ad monetization stuff because that's where they make all the money. And I actually have no problem with that. It's just the way they're doing it. That's the problem. Yeah, it doesn't send a good signal because if you're one of these small developers and you're not even making ends meet and like after the fees, then it's there's no utility to you to even have that app still on the app store. And these studios are small. They're usually three or four people. And they do make around, let's say, a million, two million bucks. All of a sudden, Unity comes along and takes 30%, another 30%. Don't forget, Apple takes 30%, okay? There's other stores, the, the Steam store, they take 30%. So right. everybody's taking that part. Now they have this other guy who just wants the download, which will end up being like another 30%. Your, your costs keep increasing. Don't forget that you have to pay the developer, the assets that you have, the, the rents, the insurance, the liability, whatever else that comes with owning a business, they don't care about that. So that's what they're doing. They're screwing the smaller developers. Because let's face it, this is not going to affect big developers. That's not what this is. But everybody small, which is 99% of developers, that's who it's hitting. I was a Unity fan. And I took courses in graduate school, by the way, mm -hmm. in Unity. So this is where you learn how to be a Unity developer in school. You learn to be, hey, I want to pick, uh, because it's the easiest place to learn, like you're saying. And the free tier made it easy for the professor to do it. C Sharp is an easy language. And all of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? I don't know if it's worth it. I might just move to Unreal because Unreal doesn't have this kind of onerous uh, charge happening. They're actually at a 5%, uh, uh, just, to, just to compare Unreal. Unreal is you pay 5% after you make a million bucks. That's it. So if you make 2 million bucks, you're still paying 5%. It's always the same 5%. The reason they picked 200,000 is because that's where a two-team developer team is probably making that. Right. You, you understand? So that's why they're taking it. The only way to be a developer, a, a real full-time indie developer is to make 
a hundred grand per person. Let's face it. They're not making 30 grand per person. If they're going to be full-time developing, that doesn't make any sense. You can't afford anything. So right. they have to be making around that 200 grand. So a two, three person team could make over 200 grand. Yeah. And it was very clear that they had not consulted any third party around this, any of their users around this change before making it, especially because they had to clarify many of the key details. I mean, one of the key details was also like the whole like install bombing situation. Right. They basically clarified after the fact, the fee that they would charge per download only applies on the first download and not like a reinstall. Like if I delete something from my you know PlayStation and then reinstall it, that developer wouldn't get hit again because people were saying, well, I can just create like a, you know, a script and then just download, delete, download, delete, download, delete. And then I can just run these businesses into the ground if I wanted to. They also clarified around, you know, games involved in charity events will be exempt from the fees. They well, see now they're starting to start to clarify because they have no choice because, well, because they didn't think it through the first time. Yeah, right. One of their key advantages is that they're allowing you to deploy on multiple platforms, like all in once. I'm pretty sure that the 20 cents would be applying to every single platform that you're downloading on. So like I can install Any new one platform. Game. Yes. I can install the same game like Diablo 4 or whatever on my PlayStation and on my PC. That's two installs. It's not yep. one for, you know, same person. It is so far. Correct. Because first of all, now they would have to track per person, which gets even more hairier. Yeah. It seems rushed, but uh, there is something I read that uh, I think in last year, June 2022, I looked this up, that they started to removing their transparency GitHub repo. So GitHub is a place where a coders store all their all their code. And they had a transparency repo where they would say how things, how they work at Unity, what they do. They removed that. And that happened a, almost, I think, oh, a year ago. I wonder if they were like planning for something like this for a long time, because you don't just do it on a whim too. Like something like this has to be planned out. Like if we're going to change this model, we have to think about how we're actually going to change it. They might have not thought about the intricacies that game developers might revolt and ask you, how are you charging us and finding out per install? That's a different question. But I bet you the monetization part with the CEO was always going to happen. He was always thinking this way. Unity basically had this policy in their terms of service to say, if you're using an older version of Unity, you have the terms of service that applies to that older version. So basically, let's say if a change like this happens and it's in the new terms of service and I'm using the old version, I wouldn't be affected by it because I, d I haven't agreed to download the new version. So that, that was actually there. That, that was in the repo, the original repo that we cannot change the terms of service on you before. Right. And so like this, retrospectively, retroactively, I'm sorry. This changed actually much sooner than a year ago, back in April of 2023. Mm -hmm they introduced a new service agreement that removed this initial clause that developers could use older terms of service. So it seems as though they've been sort of laying the foundation for this change and, and just deleting all the edge cases of how people can circumvent it. That's kind of amazing. I didn't know that they even did that in April. Everything that I've been reading online around this from game developers is just frustration. There was an open letter signed by 17 game development companies that basically said, we are boycotting Iron Source and the ads platform until we can review these policies more in an effort to sort of get Unity to backtrack on their new pricing change. This week, like when, when they announced the news around the fees, they said their executive, Mark Witten, said that uh, the fees should only affect about 10% of Unity developers. This is something that they were also pushing back on in their open letter saying it's actually not going to be 10%, it's way more. So this collective letter is a bunch of game studios who are deciding to turn off, let's make this clear, Iron Source. So people who don't know what Unity did, uh, I think this was this past year, they bought Iron Source for $4.4 billion. And Iron Source is competing with monetization play for, for games called App Lovin. So this was a play to control some of their, I guess, bring in the ad spend inside of Unity, which is how they make the most of their money. So these developers who are turning off ad spend are affecting themselves, just let's make that clear. Besides Unity, they're going to hurt their own bottom line, but they're doing it because they have no choice. And let me just read a little bit of what it says. To put it in relatable terms, what if automakers suddenly decided to charge us for every mile driven on the car that you bought a year ago? Mm -hmm. The impact on consumers and the industry at large would be seismic. So this is what they're doing. As a course of immediate action, our collective of game development companies is forced to turn off all iron source and Unity ad monetization across our projects until these changes are reconsidered. 
We urge others who share this stance to do the same. The rules have changed and the stakes are simply too high. The runtime fee is an unacceptable shift in our partnership with Unity that needs to be immediately canceled. From my end, the most disappointing part was that sort of my entire bull case hinges around Unity being the desired platform for developers and having just higher levels of satisfaction across new developers first onboarding onto just game development in general. It's much easier to ramp up on than Epic. The whole like uh, C++ versus C Sharp conversation alone, not to mention their, or their libraries and, and all of their resources. And it just seems as though this change just goes completely against that to say, okay, screw the entire free tier, you know, screw all these guys were, we're in it for the monetization aspect. That's the part that surprised me the most because it goes against their ethos as a company that they've reinforced for so long. Let's go back to the start. The reason something like Unity is successful is because they got into the schools. Students learn certain programs. It makes it easier for them to actually adopt that technology and move forward. And that gave Unity a runway. That runway can be taken away just as easily it was given if they continue on this path. If they're not charging per install, how does this work for universities? So they're gonna start exempting people, by the way. This is gonna happen. All of a sudden, I have to figure out a way how to charge universities, how to charge students. So it's kind of crazy as opposed to just learning on a platform or some sort of a, an educational license, which I don't think they have yet. The reason the educational thing was important, not because the school gets charged 20 cents, but we're not talking about now, how is Unity gathering private information of who is installing what. This is actually critical because educational systems cannot just install software and, and be monitored. The data is supposed to be somehow anonymized, and I don't even know if Unity has access to it. So when this question was asked to Unity, they don't have a good answer. They're like, we have internal metrics to figure this out. So believe us, bro, we know what we're doing and that we're going to figure out. Imagine you were being charged for something without knowing the metrics to how it was charged. It's a black box. And they've admitted this much, that it is a black box, that they're not telling you how this is done. Universities have extremely strict rules when it comes to information security and privacy, for very obvious reasons. And the fact that Unity might have a way to actually track the use of their Unity runtime within an educational context is very troubling and concerning. Our students are using the Unity runtime during their playtesting for class projects, for example. And if Unity is really able to track the number of installs, they're technically able to track how our students progress in their classes. They can track how often they play test. They can track with many people they play test. They can track all these things that they're actually not allowed to track. So this educator goes on to talk about, well, so we're using Unity because it's it's not tracking us. It's free, all this stuff. And he's he basically his point is like, look, if they start doing this, then what we have to do as an educational system is move to uh, engine agnostic situation for our mm -hmm. class. So whatever the person at home wants to use, cool. But all of a sudden now that opens up, you know, Godot is another engine that's growing in popularity. It opens up, possibly kids start learning that. It opens up in real, obviously taking up some market share. So our bull case, back to the investment portion, right. if our bull case is that Unity is going to keep growing and monopolizing this market, let's face it, it's like in a duopoly right now. If right. That continues, we will do very well. But if something stops it, the next five years could be very hard because these educational systems will stop pushing Unity. And I think that's actually an important part of my book case that they literally push Unity on their students right now. And if they stop doing that, that's a real problem to me in terms of the longer book case. To what extent does this change your thesis around Unity? Are you doing anything with your position? Like, is this, an, you know, is this something that will is news today and it's going to fade tomorrow, or is it something that is actually influences your decision around Unity? So I did. I sold almost half my position. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and the reason I didn't sell all of it, and I want to get to John Riticiello. I, I'm not saying his yeah. name right. I want to get to him, the CEO of Unity. But I sold half of it because he made the bull case harder. To me, Unity is like a no-brainer before he did this. It was because Unity is a monopoly. Go search a university programs for, for, an, for animation and 3D, pro, 3D game for making. They're using 70% Unity. Right. Go search Udemy for Unity versus Unreal. It's 70% Unity. Once again, they are the majority being used. And even if you didn't believe in the fact that, oh, they're the only one, fine. There's another one. It's called Unreal. There's two. And people are talking about Godot and these other things. It's like talking about an ant versus a lion. Like they're just nowhere near significant enough. And in fact, I would say most game developers do not want to be there because I don't want to be bug testing some right. guy's software when I'm trying to make a game. I'm trying to make a game to make some money. And, and because I love gaming, but whatever. 
Right. I'm trying to make some money and you're making it harder for me. So if Unity puts enough Roblox, this is why I sold half. If Unity puts enough Roblox, okay, they're fucking with the wrong people. Like, you know, when you fuck with the wrong people, developers are smart. They actually know how to engineer their way around things. They right. can't do it today or tomorrow, but they can figure out over the next six months to year how to engineer their way around Unity. In fact, I'm a developer, okay? And right. I was using Unity, and now I'm deciding maybe the game I was making in Unity is not worth continuing. I've only spent a couple of months, so it wasn't like years. Right. So maybe it's not worth it for me to continue learning this tool, and I can go to Unreal. Now, the bull case still exists for Unity because, one, they have this ads platform integrated really well, which you can make money with. Right. And Unreal is not the same thing. The second thing is that Unreal has an asset store not as good as Unity's asset store. Unity's right. asset store is bigger. And there's still a third thing. I'm sorry, Unity is building a, a massive backend with AI, which is going to be important. And sure. I'll give a, a simple example of why that'll be important. So let's say you're making a game, you're a small developer, and you're going to go use uh, some AI tools because that they're coming into like uh, LLMs, whatever. They're, they're making it easier to use. Unity is going to have that ability to use that in the cloud. So they have all these tools that are coming online and Unreal yet does not have it in the same stage of development. So these are all bull cases why Unity is going to continue taking over this industry. That's why I haven't sold my entire position. I no longer feel as comfortable being in all of that because I was up also too. My average was around 29, 30 bucks. So right. I was like, okay, do I take some off the table now or do I wait till it <laughs> craters? Which it might not, by the way, because the right. opposite play here is like, as it's cratering, smart, smart money is going to start buying it up because right. they know the things I've just told you. It's still a monopoly. At the end of the day, it's like Microsoft and Apple. Okay, you can say I don't want to use uh, Windows. You can say that all you want, but 90% of people use Windows. Yeah, if a the app Apple App Store is the only game in town, they can name their price, whether it's 30%, whether it's whatever, and people might be disgruntled about it, but they're still going to use it because it's the only game in town. As a developer, by the way, I was paying 30% for, I think, five years to Apple, and I wasn't making a lot. We're talking about like small developer, 10,000 a year extra, whatever it was making. And they're taking 30%. That's 7,000 now. How can you even justify doing that to anyone making under a certain amount? Apple is a whole other monopoly that should be discussed. But you're right. When there's no, no other game in town, where do you go? And so I go back to Unity. People are discussing all these other options. And Unreal is the only legitimate option to actually go to. There's no one else, in my opinion. I mean, the, the main question in my mind was to what extent are we throwing out the baby with the bathwater here? Like how bad is this going to be in terms of, well, I absolutely agree that a lot of developers are going to start to, like the seed has been planted as a result of this for them to switch platforms in 12 or 18 months, let's say. To what extent, I'm not sure, versus the amount of people that are just going to start paying 2500 um, and, and then Unity is going to get more revenue as a result of that, right? It definitely wasn't a good move because that goodwill with developers was one of their competitive advantages that they had, that they just shot themselves in the foot. But at the same time, like I think the street is going to be looking for you know, profitability, is going to be looking for the financial metrics, and this is a way to, to get them, right? I don't know the sustainability of that. That's what makes me question my position is like, well, is this a short-term you know, positive that's a long-term negative? Because once the developers leave, then all of a sudden Unity is losing market share to Unreal? That that was the main question that was rattling in my mind, at least. Well, okay, so you got to imagine this. Here you are, you have a new project. Uh, not right now, you're still in Unity. Your next game that you're making, are you going to use Unity? Yeah, absolutely not. So like right away, that, that gives you, like I'm a long-term investor. I'm actually not a short-term trader. I was investing in Unity because I wanted to keep it for 10 years because I think it was going to 10, 20 X, no joke. That right. That is what I think is going to happen if they didn't have these stupid policies in place. And the CEO, I want to get to the CEO too. So if that's my belief, and then all of a sudden I get some new information, even as a developer, and I'm like, well, I don't even want to use Unity now. Right. Because like, what if my game is successful, right? What if I do make, and I'm in a small, small tier, I haven't paid them the 25, and, and it shoots up because that is possible. Mm -hmm. It shoots up, I make over 200,000, all of a sudden I owe them like 50 grand. Like, right. Doesn't make so- sense. You, you all of a sudden, I don't know what I owe you. I don't know what I made because sometimes you remember the, these apps, a lot of it is like you buy coins in the app or you do whatever, like there's more money being spent in the app, but sometimes the app is a failure, meaning monetarily, but it shot up and you, and you sold over 200,000 units. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, 
like it might be not beneficial for you to have that app. You might have to pull it off. <laughs> like it might not make sense because you're not making enough to pay for the fees and the 30% of Apple and whatever else you got to pay for. It might actually not make sense, even if it's a successful app. The whole like the whole crux of this issue is the per installs thing, because I would have been perfectly fine if they did like, hey, we're going to do, you know, this new revenue share thing where it's similar to Unreal. It's a percentage and there's slow as you create more, you get a lower percentage. If you create up until 200,000, we get 10 percent. And if it's like a million, then we'll get 3 percent and anywhere in between. The per installs opens a new, you know, layer to this, yep. which is really the slippery slope here. I think what you said is actually uh, hits the nail on the head. If they did something like that, where they said, look, we need to keep developing this engine because this is what it goes down to. You guys aren't paying anything. We do all the tools for free. And we need you, as soon as your app is making any money, we take 10%, like you said, in the beginning, up to $200,000. After that, do a sliding scale down. I think the big guys are paying 5% or 4%, whatever, like you said. So right. it'll slide down to that. And I think that makes sense. I think that's also fair. Because like you can't use tools for free. Like we're in the modern age where I pay for like storing my photos in Apple Cloud. It's not free anymore. Right. You know? So I don't think anybody thinks everything is free. We just don't want to be ripped off. I think that's the bottom line that everybody feels like they're getting ripped off. They're they're just creating a big mess. Like all of this is just a big mess as opposed to something clean. And the clean thing was, hey, you pay us twenty five hundred bucks, you get to use the software, et cetera up to a million dollars and that's it. Like this per install thing is very difficult and uh, legally dubious, that's what I'm getting to. I don't, I don't know how, how, uh, how actually in the courts this would, would come out. Well, legally dubious because it's retroactive, right? Like you signed the terms of service that didn't have it and then all of a sudden now you're on the line for something that you didn't even know existed two years ago. Right, and it's starting January, exactly. And, and they have you by the balls because look, you made a game, you spent four years. People don't understand. People spend years making uh -huh. games. And then you put the game in the app store and you're trying to monetize this game over the next five years because you spent four years doing it. Right. That's what they don't get. The small developers spend years and years on this. You cannot just change the engine and they know that. You can't just say, hey, tomorrow it's over. So anybody who thinks Unity is dead, that's not happening, okay? That is not happening right now. This is a long-term de-evolution, I guess, or whatever. Like the, the thesis is dying slowly as mm -hmm. they continue on this, this path because in the interim, you do have no choice. Because you've been you've been making something for the last couple of years, you have to release it. Right, right. All your assets are there. All your all your stuff is already yeah. there. It takes time to move off of it. I get that. Um, but since we you know touched on the university's point, I, I'm just curious to get your take in general. Like, um, I want to I want to bring up the CEO for a second. We've ignored this guy. Let me just uh, show him. John Ricatello, the CEO. He was at EA Games. Uh, before joining Unity, he's been at Unity for quite a while now, actually, since 2016, I think it is, 2015, something like that. So this is the guy, <laughs> just so everybody knows <laughs> what he looks like, John Ricitiello, if I'm saying that right. <laughs> this, is, this is the man, okay? Looks like a mugshot, no? Yeah, it does a little bit. <laughs> so he was also, I want to bring up a couple of things here. One is that he is a business guy. This is not an engineer, and this is why I sort of like am really heartbroken with unity because it's it's such a good engineering product mm -hmm. but the leadership is not engineering minded if that makes any sense he was also e ea ceo and i want to show you during his tenure what happened so i'm going to share this tab and and i was doing research as as this was coming out i didn't sell day one I, I was doing research on on the on the ceo because look when we invest and the thing is my rule is always invest with the management and the technology right, right. i broke my rule actually I knew he wasn't like an, a real engineer and I knew he had some issues in the past, but I never looked deep into it because I was really bullish on Unity. I'm using Unity. I was bullish on it. It's like using Google. You know what I'm saying? I looked into his past and I'm like, okay, this guy was in charge of EA from 2007, somewhere around this time. The minute he gets on board, he starts making dumb acquisitions and you can go look, read his Wikipedia, which is by the way, hacked. I don't know if you saw that too. Uh, they put CEO of shit. <laughs> and I have it in my Twitter post somewhere, but it's hilarious. So he was hacked. But in 2007, he takes over and the stock proceeds to just crater until literally the day he leaves. It's kind of crazy. Like around this time he left right here, when he's gone, that's when the stock starts to recover, when he left, because he made so many mistakes. This is what happens when you just invest in business guys and not like technologists. So uh, this guy is a famous uh, developer or commentator or something, uh, Asmon Gold. You already know about John Ricitiello, however you say that, the CEO. He sold the... That's the super villain who wanted to charge people 
a dollar for bullets after they play the game for hours so they're hooked when you Ooh. are six hours into playing battlefield oh. and you run out of ammo in your clip and we ask you for a dollar to reload you're really not very price sensitive at that point in time yeah he, he was a so i mean i we, we can go on there's a lot more but like this is the kind of mentality we're dealing with and to me when i see something like that it makes me really not even want to keep a dollar in this company, honestly. Right. And, and the only reason I'm keeping it is because Unity itself is still a monopoly. Like that is my only now left bull case. That's why I'm keeping half my position at this point. Do you think that there will be any change in executives or, or not really? I mean, if you look at his tenure, we're sort of around that time, right? He, he's spent like seven year stints and basically everywhere he's been. I would hope that the board itself realizes that they need some stronger leadership because he's poisoning the well. Like, right? When you poison the well, not everybody dies right away. So it takes time. And I hope the smart people see that Unity's whole lifeblood, remember, is developers. If you screw with the developers, no matter how popular you are now, I feel like it's a slippery slope. And this guy, he screwed EA for how long? 2007 to 2013, five years. Yeah. So I feel like he's doing something very similar and I was ignoring it for too long. And look, I'm smart enough to realize that, hey, maybe I should update my thesis on this thing. And so I have. So I took risk off the table. <laughs> I'm starting to lean. Maybe I should take all the risk off the table. But there's a piece of me behind that is like, oh, maybe they'll get rid of him. Oh, maybe they'll do this. Maybe they'll change their ways. You know, like, so that's still there in the back of my mind. But I didn't want to have my whole position. I didn't want to have it all in unity because now I'd rather put it into something else. So that's why I took half off, you know? Yeah, no, that's smart. Some smart decision. I think I'm going to be doing something similar, at least taking a, a good chunk off the table. It's not even all the way down yet. Well, so that's the other thing. Like the stock didn't really react that much. So I'm just wondering, like, because it seems like the backlash that we've been getting on X, on I've even been seeing it on LinkedIn, where developers are just posting about it, is not corresponding with the stock price movement. The stock was down like 5% this week. Let's face it. The regular people, developers, are not respected in Wall Street in the same way. So right. they're like, Unity did reasonably well last quarter, even as they're losing money, by the way. They're not a profitable company. So they're like, okay, let's see what happens happens next quarter. So I think Wall Street is more like, let's wait and see, as opposed to let's sell off this possible, you know, expansion. And in fact, if I was to take Wall Street side, I'm like, I would start calculating how much money they can make from this. This is what I mean. Like they were a monopoly at the end of the day. Like this is why I didn't get rid of everything because like they could still do well. Like this is what's crazy. Let's say the 70% market share goes to 60% right. market share. There's still a monopoly. Yeah. I mean, it's not great long-term with what it signals, but you know, like I said before, it's going to be good short-term because they're just going to have, they're going to see more money coming into their bottom line. I think as soon as the new CEO, as soon as he's fired, I would buy right back into Unity a lot. He is really the major problem. I just think it'll be a much smarter play with someone who understands the technology uh, uh, intricately. I don't think he does, honestly. I think he's a business guy. And if you look at his history, his background is business. In fact, like he ran or helped run haagen -Dazs. This is not who you want running Unity, okay? It's just, he's the bad guy in the room and uh, I I'm not happy he's there. I have another thing which is crazy. So when Unity bought Iron Source, let me bring this right. up too. Yep. Unity is merging with Iron Source in an all stock deal, valuing Iron Source at 4.4 billion into a, a big consolidation play for gaming, which I actually thought was good. And Unity suffered for that. I was like, this is a smart play to consolidate the industry because at the end of the day, I think me and you are investing because it's a monopoly, right? That's why we're doing this. So this is what's interesting. The companies have confirmed the news here. Iron Source is being valued at 4.4 billion, an all stock deal. Part of the transaction will also involve Silver Lake and Sequoia, the two largest Unity shareholders. Yeah, they put a billion each. They put a billion dollars each. So now let's go to something else. I want to talk about this guy. Tomer Barziev was the CEO or CEO of Iron Source and co-founder right. of Iron Source, who was purchased. He had shares given to Unity for, I think, 4.7 million shares. Look who sold all their, all their stake. Silver Lake sold their entire stake right now, 9-15-2023. Wow. Okay. So... Basically, all gone. The, the people who put in a billion after Iron Or, or they're actually left here. They left a little bit, 61,000, but they sold the majority of it, 188,000 shares. Well, why do no. they sell it now? It's directly a result of this that happened. So if Silver Lake doesn't feel like holding these shares, like why should we as retail investors give this guy the benefit of the doubt when Silver Lake doesn't want to give him the benefit of the doubt? You know, I still want to take a look at this because this is very interesting. Now, you think John is the major seller because he sold it. People are talking about this is stupid. 2,000 shares he sold. Mm -hmm. People are talking about this doesn't mean anything. He didn't sell it because of this news. Okay. He still has 3 million shares. So 2,000 right. shares is nothing. $80,000. 
People should stop talking on Twitter about this nonsense. This means nothing. But take a look at this guy, Tomer Barziv. Let's take a look at him. Tomer Barziv started with like 4.748 million shares. Right. He is down to, it's like 1.2 million. He's already sold 75% or so of his shares. It shows how little he believes in the business. Right. So all of this just sounds very poor on us being retail investors, trying to imagine the the wonderful future of this company and then everybody else starting to not believe it. You know, like everybody who's like the smart money, let me put it that way. Is your position sizable? That's what I want to know. If you lost your position, would it matter? Or are you going to, you know, are you going to sell or hold through? I've been averaging down on Unity throughout this year and I've been buying more around the $30 range. I still have a couple of tranches that are like $60, $80. I think I have one that's like $100 from when they IPO'd. Basically. Oh, you, you were really a believer in terms of like buying it early on. Okay. I, I bought them in the IPO, like not on IPO day, but like the IPO month, let's say. And I held through all the way to what, $200. $20 when they went and I've been buying more under 100 simply due to the fact that you said, right, the monopoly aspect of it and just the adoption and the whole developer community as a competitive advantage over it's easier to onboard. They have more resources. Mm -hmm. Newer developers are going to come into the space. They're going to onboard onto Unity as opposed to something else. <laughs> this news really has shot that thesis a little bit. So I might sell some of the lower tranches and just reallocate that money to like PayPal or something uh, just because of the, of the same reasons, right? I just don't think it was a good way to telegraph that move. I do think that they will backtrack a lot of the stuff that they've announced, that they're going to clarify a lot of the stuff that they announced. The damage has already been done. I mean, you can't really, you know, cork that genie again from an emotional sentiment perspective from these developer communities. Even if they backtrack, then it's going to be all good on Unity. I still have now had that seed planted in my head to switch just from that initial news that was released. So I'm not selling everything because I do think that there's going to be positive financial results as a result of this, especially if more people go through that desired consequence of adopting the, the pro version and just paying that 2500 I am going to sell a portion just because I think with this move, it's a lot of risk additionally that targets the bull thesis specifically, right? Like the, mm -hmm. thesis, the developer community, the adoption, it's easy to do. And like now if they're shitting on developers, if they're shitting on the universities with regards to like, hey, we're tracking your installs, that obviously weakens that bull thesis, right? And so if it's something that directly weakens that bull thesis, then all of a sudden I have to correspond, like what is my level of risk from a portfolio allocation perspective versus how strongly do I believe in this bull thesis? It's only a matter of time before more haphazard decisions are made that focus on short-term dollars at the expense of long-term like LTV, let's say. Yeah, no, I agree with everything you said. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out, if Unity backtracks, let's say they backtracked and just changed their policy and said, we're sorry for doing this. We're not doing this anymore. We just need to do some sort of a, a pay tier. We have to take over 200,000, 5%, whatever. If they did something like that, something more simpler, I think most developers will actually get in line I yeah. think the ones who will leave, it's a small minority. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's an inertia thing. If I spent the last four years working on Unity games and I'm an expert yeah, and I have to go learn, I, I, I love that people say, oh, they can just leave. That doesn't work in the real world, okay? Yeah. In the real world, someone has to go learn that thing. D different bugs exist across the two systems, first of all. It's not going to be the same one-to-one. -one. Yeah. So now whatever problems you had in Unity will not translate to the same problems in the next thing. So developers know all this. They're not idiots. Okay. So if Unity backtracks, well, especially if the CEO gets kicked out, but forget about that for a second. Let's say Unity backtracks on this. I think the churn is very small. They're still doing well right now, quote unquote, well for an unprofitable company. So if they do well, the stock can actually move up. So two things yeah. could be happening here. The stock can actually go up and the fundamentals can get worse. It's kind of crazy that this happens, but this does work out. And next year in 2024 is when, if they haven't changed, I think that's when the fundamentals seriously deteriorate, when people have had six months, right. a year to move away from it. So I think in the next year, we might actually do good holding the stock, by the way, because mm -hmm. it won't affect any of the actual metrics. You can't just leave the product behind. Uh, uh, well, that group of people who said, the gamers just said, we've turned it off, but how long can they actually turn it off for? That's my question. Yeah, they're hurting themselves while they're doing that. They're actually hurting paying their own employees. That could only last so long. 
So they're expecting that those group of people expecting within the next week or two, this is solved. And even if they do backtrack and say, hey, we're actually rethinking this entire system. And let's say the majority of the people that were in uprage in uproar right now are perfectly fine. It still signals that executives do not consider the community at all when they're making these decisions, because this yep. is something that could have been solved with a, you know, a one hour call with some of their developers and say, hey, look, what do you think about this? And then they would have gotten that immediate user feedback in real time, as opposed to just getting it retroactively. I wonder if they did that, by the way. We don't know the behind the scenes. I wonder if they called up indie developers and they're like five out of 10 don't like it. But tough nuggies, we are the only game in town. Like that is possible. Yeah, if they did like a, a cost benefit thing to say like, oh, well, even if we lose half of our developers, the half that we retain are now paying are going right. to make up for the rest. Yeah, that's more nefarious, I think, than, than I'd like to believe. Well, then look at that guy who wanted to charge for bullets. The guy is also 65 years old. Um, like how much longer can he be the CEO, realistically speaking? You know, we're not going to put our money behind a whim or a, or a, or a hope. Uh, but at the same time, like he's been with the company since 2014. What is that, like seven years, eight years? So he'll be there probably for another two years and then retire, right? Like at some point, this guy also wants to uh, ride off into the sunset. It's not an, an impossibility for us to get new leadership, especially if he ruffles feathers at this age. He might just be like, you know, fuck it. Like, I don't want to deal with that. Or the board might just usher him out, um, you know, similar to what's happening with, uh, isn't, isn't Dan Shulman just retiring? And that's why, like, you he know, was getting pushed out because his stock price was down. Yeah. Right. So it might be a similar deal, I, I think, which we might see even coming in the next couple of years, especially as we get more involved in this like AR space in general. Uh, Unity is the main software play mm -hmm. with that space. And that was also like a bull thesis of mine. We didn't, even, we didn't even mention this, by the way, but yes, Unity and Apple are in a partnership for Vision yeah. Pro. Like, I'm not a say. I'm not. First of all, I don't think Vision Pro is going to be the the end all be all for VR. I think Meta actually has a better, cheaper thing. But even Meta is partnered with Unity. Yeah. So Meta wanted to buy Unity back in 2013. They did. Yeah. It was a shame they didn't. Honestly, I mean um, that yeah. would have. Oh my God, that would have solidified <laughs> Meta. Yeah, they would have completely monopolized the entire AR space. To be honest yeah. with you, but um, so anyways, there there's all of these other aspects that contribute to the business and and the high level bull thesis in addition to, to just this, obviously it's not a good look. And I think that, like we said, they will backtrack and they will make adjustments to it. I do think that the CEO is probably only, only gonna be there for another two years max. Hoping that John gets kicked out as CEO is not the same thing as knowing he will, and in a reasonable amount of time. So- Well, I mean, he's 65 with Ellie. No, no, well, look, it's going to happen. I'm not saying that, but I don't know if it's two years or three years, or maybe he lasts until he's 70 because he's gung-ho. I have no idea. Does that mean I have to hold on Unity as a $2 stock until that happens? Like, what right. does that mean? Yeah, no, so, I agree what you're saying. So I'm not saying, once again, I did not sell all of it. I'm willing to hold to the $2 level, in fact, because I've taken a bet that, okay, half of the money I'm willing to risk. Just risk. Just flat out gamble away. Because right now, I went from 100% sure this was a 10X yeah. to now oh my God, this might actually like be just flat. I don't think it's going down. I don't think it's going away, but I'm just saying like flat. I'm not in unity to stay at 35 bucks, 40 bucks for the rest of my life. Like, right. uh, so it needs to show growth. We're taking a gamble. That's what we're doing right now. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a good place to end it. Um, I think we covered a lot of ground here. Oh yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, I appreciate you taking the time, man, honestly. And, uh, Really interesting to see what, what happens going forward with, with the stock. Yeah, we might do this again because I do have a brother who's in the 3D field. He's an animator. He's a, a software developer. He has a lot of thoughts on Unity. So if you want to do another roundtable, we might do that. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love that. Let's organize it. All right, cool. See you All later, right. everybody. See you.